On this week's show, we're in Lakota, Iowa, hunting pheasant at the first annual Lakota Wounded Warrior Hunt. Lakota, Iowa is a small town made up of about 300 people. And when you go there and visit, you just, you feel at home. The people are just, you know, some of the nicest people you would ever meet. And it's a true model of what you would think a small Midwest town would be like. When Jason and Bernie Becker approached me about filming this hunt, you know, I jumped at the opportunity. I'm very familiar with the Wounded Warrior program, what it does for our military heroes. To get this opportunity to go along with these four Marines from Camp Lejeune and to try to document and tell a little bit about their story, why they're pheasant hunting, was a true blessing, you know, not only to participate, but to make new friends and to be able to document and share this hunt and tell their story through the camera lens. Come on, here. This whole position, they're gonna wrap around here. Ruck. Yep. U3. Abe one. They got away. Kevin one. Jamie we're waiting on. The experienced South Dakota hunter we're waiting on one for him. I can see by volume. <laughs> 50% right now, that's my way. Yours don't run up and get away, that's for sure. Oh, that one kind of did almost. Did it? The one that you grabbed, didn't you say? Oh, yeah, wow. Well, he was there, but he saw a little fight left. There's bird dogging. Right. <laughs> right there, that's a hen hen. Rooster. Oh, easy. 
you think, buddy? It's great. Would've been good if my gun shot. <laughs> Unless you've walked this path, you don't know what it's like to be in these boots. Until you've shared this load, you can't call yourself a partner. Unless you're from here, you can't know what it's like to be here. So, choose your partner carefully. Grunt and Hunting, the real deal since 1894. Put a GPS on her, see how many miles she went today. <laughs> it's gone a long way, hasn't it? <laughs> in on her pretty fast. Uh, this is my, should be like maybe the second one or the first one. Yeah, the first one, um, confirmed kill. <laughs> my first pheasant ever in Iowa. And uh, I think that's one of the most exciting things I've ever done. Thanks to Jason and Lee, Lee here. And Coda. Coda was your and best Coda, friend that one. It was a uh, teamwork, so, and Coda especially. So here's one for Tim. Thank People you. usually kiss their first confirmed oh. kill. <laughs> <laughs> There's an Iowa bird for you. <laughs> Good man. Good work. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it, there, he shot once, and we were downwind. Feathers in the face. <laughs> he got her. That's it. All ultimate insult. It, Throwing was, feathers in other people's faces. Who's this? 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 Who's this?
locks on point and it just stands there. We're like, go ahead and get up there. He's got the gun down. Camera, Keep right? the gun up more than once. He's got the tape rolling the whole time. Cool. We get up there, kick around, off the rooster goes, starts climbing, boom. One and Lee said, okay, go. point the gun towards the bird now, but above the dog's head. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's like, like this. He gets it up and yeah, he's Good smoking. job, man. Like life, in hunting, there are few guarantees. And calling it quits early because you're cold isn't going to cut it. Being able to lock the heat in while staying quiet and mobile is key. The warmth of a heater bodysuit means spending less time inside and more time outside. Shoot more deer. Yeah, it's that simple. At HeaterBodySuit.com. Later on that evening, we attended a dinner banquet honoring the four Marines. So proudly we hailed after twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the and generosity that this town, local businesses, other manufacturers within the hunting industry um, did for these guys at this banquet was overwhelming. These guys were given new shotguns, gun cases, clothing, you know, gift cards from Cabela's, all kinds of, of neat stuff. And this banquet was just a way to say thank you for these Marines and honor them for what they did and the sacrifices, you know, they gave and their families gave while they were serving our country. The next morning we had a filling breakfast and then it was back out into the field. It's all packed full of hair. But I'm hoping I can so what you say you want to make a wager on that uh, first bird or what? My name is uh, Sergeant Jamie Lanshin. I was uh, was 2nd Anglico uh, and 
in Helmand Province in Afghanistan. Uh, I was injured December 10th, uh, 2010. Um, we were on foot patrol and uh, started taking contact. And uh, my friend stepped on a pressure plate IED. It had killed him and then injured me. It had broke my elbow and my shoulder and, and uh, it had cracked my skull on the right side. So I spent about a month in a hospital and been recovering since. And I'm from South Dakota and I haven't been able to go home for a while. So boys from Lakota, Iowa, let me come up here and hunt with him for a few days and have been really great. Uh, the banquet was awesome, Veterans Day, and got to remember some of my friends that were uh, either injured or killed in, in Iraq and Afghanistan while I was deployed. Uh, we had Corporal Christopher Leon, who was killed in 06 in Ramadi, Iraq. We had Captain Warren Frank in Iraq in 2008. We had uh, Nicholas Pansini when we got back from 2007. He was a uh, victim of just some of the stuff he was dealing with. And then the guy that was killed next to me, a real good friend of mine, uh, Staff Sergeant Stacy Green from Alabama. He was, uh, was a good guy, great firefights with. And to get away from that and get away from that thought, out here hunting and be able to enjoy Veterans Day and remember my friends and my brothers really meant a lot to me. So getting out here and hunting with my Marines from Camp Lejeune and really enjoying that instead of going home and dealing with a bunch of South Dakotans. Get able to hang out with my friends from the Marine Corps and come out here and shoot some birds. Been missing quite a few, but I'm shooting left-handed this year, so that's the first year for that. But really enjoying it out here. So we appreciate it. We appreciate all the support from the uh, Midwest and all the area all over the country. We really enjoy it. Thank you. So I'm gonna try out my left hand and shoot. We'll see how it goes. Did right this morning. I shot right-handed, but. Uh, Pheasants are a little bit more camouflaged with the grass, so I don't think I'll be able to see them with the red eye. I'm gonna get the next one. I'm gonna say that all day, by the way, Andrew. I'm gonna keep saying I'm gonna get the next one. I thought he were hunting pheasants. Had a few roosters fly out, a few hands. Dog Josh uh, pinned down one one hand. But uh, had a few shots, but we uh, fortunately didn't get anything yet. We have one rooster that landed coming down the first pass. Landed down here somewhere, so hopefully we can flush him and some other ones. See what we can do. My name's uh, Kevin Koffler. I'm from uh, Rhinelander, Wisconsin, up in the Northwoods. Um, brought me here today was uh, I'm a wounded warrior from Camp Lejeune. Uh, I was attached to uh, CLB-2, um, deployed to Afghanistan July of 2010. Uh, August 13, 2010, the wrecker I was driving um, struck about a 140-pound IED. I ended up uh, getting knocked out unconscious for a while. Um, I shattered my uh, right ankle, crushed my left foot. Had uh, approximately seven surgeries so far. We'll need more down the road, just don't know when. Um, a couple months ago, I heard about this trip, um, put my name in it. About a week later, I found out I was going. Got my bags packed, ready to go. Just had to wait for the time to come. Came down here, we were greeted uh, by the governor, a um, bunch of Marines at uh, Des Moines. Made the trip up here to Lakota and uh, had a big welcome here. Did some pheasant hunting yesterday. Um, I shot uh, the first pheasant of the day. I think we ended up shooting like 13. Never been pheasant hunting before, and uh, this is the best experience, pheasant hunting experience I've ever, I've ever done. And uh, can't wait to come back here to uh, do it again someday. You guys are having fun. Get their minds off of all the stuff they got going on in June. We're bunching all the birds up, so we should have a pretty good shoot here. Come on, bird! There's one! Two! Two! Three! They heard me! 
Yeah. All the girls run for me. What was that? I said all the girls run for me. I'm single, so they run. They're scared. Is that marine comedy or anything? That was marine comedy. We uh, we're we're known not to be very smart, but we uh we can pick up big rocks and shoot big guns. So we get the job done. We yell a lot too. Uh, we make fun of each other a lot. Um, we fight a lot, but we love each other. I don't know what the deal is. It's worse than brothers by far because you'll literally punch each other out. But we have fun. They're gonna move at lightning speed through this again. Right there. There you hear that. You hear the cackle that time like we just talked about. There you go, right? There you got him. There you got him. Everyone had a great time on this hunt. A lot of pheasants were shot off camera. And it's not about numbers, even if one trigger hadn't been pulled. You know, it gave these Marines, our brothers, a temporary escape from the things going on back in Lejeune. And I hope by them viewing this and allowing us to have them out on this hunt, lets them know how much they are appreciated for the things they've done for our country. Uh, we had Corporal Christopher Leon, who was killed in 06 in Ramadi, Iraq, Captain Warren Frank in Iraq, Nicholas Pansini, when we got back from 2007, and the guy that was killed next to me, a real good friend of mine, uh, Staff Sergeant Stacy Green from Alabama. Gone Wild Outdoors is presented by Hoyt Archery. Get serious, get Hoyt. Real Abbott, makers of the turkey tool. Front and optics, the real deal. Copper John sights, nothing tougher. Gone Wild Outdoors, beyond ordinary.